officer who has been, you know, went close to Jesus and being a person who even served God and yet to believe that Jesus could perform miracles. He went close to Jesus and asked for the healing of his servant. And because of his faith, Jesus said, there is no person among Israel who possesses the same faith as this Lord of Soul. And this point in the picture, this is in continuation to the scenario of that story of the officers of one of the officers of the Roman soldiers that asked for life. But you know, if you read the book of Mark, after healing the servant of the officer, Jesus and the disciples went and visited the house of Simon Peter, where Jesus saw the mother of Simon Peter got sick. And so Jesus also touched her and she was healed. But in the book of Luke, it's another city. Because you know, after he, the officer's servant, he went to a town or a village and then he performed another miracle the task for life. By the way, the song says, My life is in your hand. Yes, our life is in your hand. Not only his life, her life, our life will be in God's hand. And you know, there are lots of incidents in the Bible that God performed miracles by giving life again to the dead one. And we all know there are one more were those people who were given by God and never life to live. Now after healing the servant of that military officer, God and his people, you know, from Capernaum, where that officer was living, they drifted down. And according to the map, that this city is not so far from Capernaum. But Capernaum is a place we know to be a place where people living in there are bad ones. And even in Nazareth, Nazareth, Capernaum, yes, people thought that all the people living there, they were bad ones, bad community. But here comes Jesus, he drifted down. And then he was passing the plain of Israel. And passing the plain of Israel, there is in the city of Nain. And this is now the story of our topic today. Upon entering the city of Nain, you know from the start of the day we were increasing the miracles that God performed out of His hands. Not only from creation, not only until salvation or the redemption, but you know, in between, we had studied all the miracles performed by God using His hands. And so passing by the plane of his three Lord, they went inside into the gate of the city of Maine or the village of Maine. And then when he came into the gate, the Bible tells us in the book of Luke 7, so afterward, the word afterward, after healing the servant of the army officer, after healing the blind man, and after healing, you know, lots of people were seen brought before him. And soon afterward, Jesus went to a city called Nain. So he said, drifting down from the Bernal, passing by the plain of Israel, and now they're about to enter the city of Nain. And then his disciples, of course, the crowd following him. As I said, you know, people not only following after this 
us to hear his words. But of course, they had the intention that if they were always following Jesus, whatever their infirmities be, that Jesus would run away give them. That's one of the purposes. And some of them following this because of the time they are in need of food, that God could do magic and then they would be fed by Jesus. You know, those people follow Jesus, they had different interests, different intentions. And so when they got inside the city of men, a lot of people, you know, following them aside from the disciples. And to the surprise of Jesus, when he was about to enter into the gate, the city of men, it seems that just as he arrived at the gate, he was about to enter the disciples and of course the crowd following him. A funeral procession was coming. Funeral position, you know? Sometimes funeral position it would it would create traffic. There was a time when I had my equipment, not even in Gagaya. And so I left the home an hour before the equipment. But you know, passing through what I tell you, the position for the funeral, very low. Very low. I said he must be a permanent person. Because lots of people, you know, going with, with them, the procession going to the cemetery. And so instead of arriving on the exact good time on my schedule, I arrived 50 minutes late. And so sometimes funeral procession, you know, it creates trouble, problem because of traffic. Conditions of vehicles. But look, when Jesus saw that there was a funeral procession, and that's normal, because lots of people died in his life anyway. But you know, how come that he got activated of this procession? Why? What do you think? I don't know that somebody whispered at him, you know, the one that was inside the coffin. He is the only son of that lady walking close to the coffin. You remember? Did you have noticed that woman with black dress? She is the mother. And you know, she is a widow. And there's nobody in the world that would give her inspiration except her son. And now the son died. With that information, of course, Jesus was a man of compassion. In first of all, it continued, and the living man was the only son of a woman who was widow, and the last crowd from the town was one here. You know, try to imagine, if you were a woman before the olden times, you know, even in the same time, as if you are a male community of a man. In other words, there is no value in you. And one of the things that interests today in some other parts of the world, you know, this is cancer. They are having that cancer. And if you're a woman, and there was a missionary coming from Africa, and then in uh, Uganda, when he visited, coming back to the Philippines, I talked to him because, you know, since before I left, I, I wanted to become a missionary also in those areas. But then he told me, you know, in the place where I work as a missionary, the attitude of the Adventists, you know, are still the same of the attitude in the Bible time. I said, in what sense? Because if you are a woman and you got married and then you have properties with your husband, if your husband died, then you are nothing. All the properties will be taken by your brother and sister in law. You are nothing. Not unless that one of the brothers will get married to you. And then if he will marry you, then you can give the property which you have with your husband. But if not, none of the brethren or the brothers and the kings folk would marry you, then you are good for nothing. You will be indicted and indicted. And you have to go find your way. It's so sad. But in biblical times, it's the same. Once you are a widow and then you have your husband, you are nothing in the community. No wonder how you, you know, ask for help, but you 
are nothing. You are but just a commodity. But how come that we hear sad life? Almost all the people in the village you know accompanied her. The Bible tells us, and the large crowd from the town was with her. What do you think was the main reason? It is because this woman, he was a kind of woman who has who had a golden heart. Before her husband died, people plugged into her house and then asking for something. And this woman at once, you know, he, she was the very one, you know, hunting to them the needs. And the moment the people would come to their home, she would open up the door and say, what do you want? And then this woman would have to give all what they needed for. And so this woman, you know, come to give the hearts of the people within the community. That when the husband died, still the people thought that this woman is worthy of our support, worthy of our help. Because when the husband was living, she was the one who gave us, handed to us all the things that we need. And they were there accompanying this woman. Jesus knew about the story. And what happened? Well, the first time, when the Lord saw her, well, of course, after the information was given, when the Lord saw her crying, weeping, I don't know whether I mean, there are women or mothers or persons with somebody home so dear to them. Be passing away and they as if they will be affected, just laugh and then stay as if nothing happens. Maybe he sees when he's crazy. But normally if someone dies, I don't know how many of you cry well that even the whole day you keep on crying for the passing away of your loved one. You know, I experienced something when my father died. Father woke up in the morning when I heard I was sleeping, I was sleeping from the time that I heard that my, my father got dealt in an ambush with tobacco because of the Muslim leaders. And so I heard the people talking down below our house talking about the death of my father. You know, after waking up, I cried. Five o'clock in the morning. The whole day I cried. I don't want to hear. Three o'clock in the afternoon, I still crying. You know, I didn't like to cry despite the fact that there's no tears coming out from my eyes. Because I'm a papa's boy. Wherever my dad goes, then I used to be on his side. I kept on crying and crying. You know, I, I, I get scared when I was in grief for a third person, you know, a dead person. I don't dare to come and see because the moment I saw a person who is dead, when I sleep on my bed, I came to remember the face of the person with them. And so I don't get to see the person with his death. But you know, at the death of my father, I think, I want to hug my father. I don't know the coffin. We used to put the coffin, you know, on the table or the stand. And there's a vacant area right at the bottom, below the coffin. And there, where I used to sleep. One week, you know, on BTN because of the death of my father. But I used to sleep right below his coffin. Because I heard, according to some, that a person, a dead person, could still go back and would have to show himself to his loved ones. And that's one thing that I am watching. If my father was kicked down from the coffin, that's the time I have to have his legs and I'll never release him anymore. I think I'm watching my father to sleep down from the coffin. But it never happened. So I said, if my father would have to sleep down, ah, I would grab his legs and then I'll never release him because I don't want him to be away. From that time on, the death of my father, even if now, is a bad person in Pattaya and Agha. Dia ni cukup handa. Nak tolong ko, bahan lagi disuruh ko. Right after that, from the death of my father. And so, when the Lord saw her, his heart 
feed the people. You know, Jesus, I would say that uh, Jesus was a man, a melancholic man. Yeah, melancholic man. There was no reason why I know that God, you know, when he had seen things that would make him happy, he would shout for joy and jump and laugh. Never. But there are things in the Bible that when Jesus saw people of people mourning, he cried. Just as he cried the death of Lazarus. And now her comes a lady, a mother, crying. And he felt compassion according to the New World Translation. When the Lord saw her, his heart was filled with pity for her. And he said to her, Don't cry. Don't cry. What if somebody would whisper you, Hey, don't cry. It didn't matter how you cry before that dead person, he will not come to life again. And so Jesus came close to the mother, and then he got the sooner the mother, I suppose, and then he said, Hey, Mrs. But you want your answer in deep inside her heart. And then she said, Why should I stop crying? She's my only boy. I think she's my only boy. He is my only joy. My, you know, my, my companion, you know. He is my inspiration. And now he's God. I know that I cannot get married. And so God, you know, he was thinking of comforting the woman. What did he was that? When the Lord saw, he said, he said, he said, he When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and she moved on crying. In other words, he sneaked in to be close to the mother, without the notice of the mother, without the notice of the mother even, and then he says, sir, Will not don't cry. Secret. Don't cry. But you're gonna feel you're gonna start crying when the one passing away is the dearest from your heart. And you want to think, Jesus was about to change her grief to joy. Yet he could not forbear this expression of tender sympathy. Despite the fact that Jesus would like to cheer up the mother, the crying mother, the mother was thinking of her boy. Jesus tried to change the atmosphere, the mood, the feelings, but he did not avoid the fact that there inside his heart, he sympathized the mother. Yes, he sympathized the mother. And so when he came close to the position, when he stood close to the side of the mother, he went close to the top. When the people saw Jesus, they knew that Jesus knew the Bible. They knew that Jesus knew the 5,000, the 4,000. And they knew that by the touch of that woman, who had issued blood for 12 years, that woman was recovered, was healed. And then they were thinking, could this Jesus do something with this dead person? If he treated the blind man, if he treated those who had leprosy, if he treated the paralytic person, could he still resurrect this dead person? And so people now trying to focus their eyes onto Jesus, no longer care to the mother who was crying. They kept on questioning themselves. But when they saw Jesus, silence fell within that crowd. That those who were crying, and now the cry subsided. But the mother could have stopped her emotion. She kept on crying and crying. But the father Jesus said, Stop crying. Stop crying. But the rest of the people, and those who believe Jesus, those who believe that when He healed the sick people, that power comes from God. He did know that when He feed the 5,000, they were part of them, and that power comes from the heaven. And so they believe that God can still change the 
is made boy into a living one. If he, if he perform miracles, he can still perform miracles even to the living person. And so in that position, there were two kinds of people. People who believe that God can resurrect the dead person. And the people who believe that he is only God in healing sick people, but not to resurrect a dead person. What happened? Well, when Jesus came close to the coffin, he said, Okay, get, let the coffin down to the ground. Behold, the coffin was some other version of the Bible, and he pulled the scriptures, right? The scriptures is not okay, because you know, when you bring a dead person to the cemetery, it shouldn't be the scriptures, it should be the coffin. And so the reading, New Living Translation says, it's coffin. And so God does us. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it, and the fever stopped. And of course, when he got close, he said, Yaman, I tell you, get out. Yaman, I tell you, get out. Why did he not touch that big person? Because he was inside the coffin. But Jesus just touched the coffin. And he said, young man, I tell you, get out. Friends, if Jesus will touch the chair that you are sitting, if Jesus will touch the bed that you are lying, if Jesus will touch the place where you are sitting, there is still power from him that would enable us to be healed and be healed. He is a powerful God. Just touch him to the coffin, the Bible does us. And then he walked over to the coffin and touched it. And then he said, young man, get up. What happened next? You know the coffin was still closed. And the people who believe that Jesus was only going to heal sick people, but not But you know, those people who believe that he can resurrect and give life into the dead, they were waiting for the coming up of the dead person. They were waiting for the miracles to happen in that place, in that time. They were so excited. If the dead person would come to life again, what would he look like? The same as when he was alive or changed his face because And I think he was only bad. But you know, when Jesus said, I tell you, get up in verse 15. Then the dead boy sat up and began to talk. The dead boy sat up and began to talk. What is magic? Wonders of all wonder. A man who is dead. But just a task of God onto the coffin, the dead man came to life again. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Ah, oh, what a joy the mother was. With that boy, her only inspiration, her only hope, her only companion in the house, now came to life again. What a joy in the heart. Of the one. And then the US said in the serving this he who stood beside the serving mother at the gate of name, what's this the very morning, every morning of the mother? But when Jesus touched the coffin, when Jesus spoke to the dead person, then they were all amazed. The dead came to life again. And those people who believe that Jesus is coming from heaven, coming from God, they shouted for joy, they jumped, and they had hope that whatever happens to them, if Jesus is with them, they will still be alive. Jesus is everything. Jesus 
is everything in me. That's why he even said in his psalm, go psalms, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I don't know some of the conditions, but you have to translate the Bible, the Lord is my shepherd, no problem. No problem. Please get up. 
this boy became so low and low and low. You know what I mean? He said, no, it's okay. But finally, the father said, Pastor, no, you don't know what I'm saying. Pastor, I'm going to tell you. So, I'm going to tell you. 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 And then we went to the grandpa. No plan. We went to the bread thread. Knocked on the door at 9 o'clock in the evening. Asking, what's the blood type you have? What's the type of your blood? Because you know the type of the son, the boy is A, the type A. Very hard to look. I think you kept on asking, asking. And then there was somebody who suggested, why don't you go to the, to the place? And there's a small blood bank there. You go there. And you can probably see, you know, find what you're looking for. And you need that. And so we found type A, blood type A. And so, of course, we got the blood. And the problem, the hospital, the person who was in charge in taking up the blood of the blood was out. We were there bringing the blood. I think it was almost, you know, out of control because we were, you know, in a hurry just to see the life of the boy. But we were in the hospital, of course, another hospital, because that hospital where he was confined has no machine to, you know, get the blood of the blood. So we went to another hospital. But you know, they would open the door. They just answer us, no, the insurance of getting the blood of is not, not here. He went home. You better come back tomorrow. How long is that? No, you put that to the refrigerator. I tell you. Refrigerator. No, we need it now. As we first say, you know, push the door. And then the security guard came because he wanted to let us out. I said, I'm pastor. And we want to save the life of the boy. Please help us. This flag. We want the blanket to be given to the boy. And then, of course, the guard helped us. I mean, after the guard was so close to the antitests. And so he helped us. And then, of course, we gave the blanket to the other hospital and give them to the boy. Finally, because the development and recovery of the boy is very slow, then I decided, Sam, we better bring this boy to Iligan Sanitary. And so I talked to the doctor, Doc, we will transfer a patient to Iligan. We have a hospital there, then I think we have to provide him in the hospital. Okay, okay, Pastor, see Pastor, we will help you. And then the doctor, you know, asked the ambulance to carry the patient for Kuliga. But unfortunately, two hours after arriving in Kuliga, the boy died. And it pained my heart because despite the fact that the boy was so unruly, but still, he is a blessing to the father. And the father cried bitterly. The mother cried bitterly. But deep inside my heart, I had in mind, maybe God took that boy away because we cannot control him in his room. That's what in my mind. Maybe that boy was taken by God. He allowed that to happen. Because you cannot control him. You cannot even give them a good training and discipline. And so, I said, Sam, we don't know the plan of God. God has a plan. And his plan is much better than our plans. We will give everything to him. And then the father, the mother, you know, understood. And then they accepted the incident. And now, they bear another children. And as of now, we have, I think, five children. I said, Glenn, the wife, Allen, Allen, Sam, please do something for your children. Do something. You know what? When they were riding in my car. I had my crochet. And then they were there assisting me. A four year old girl, the younger sister of that boy who passed away. They were riding in the back of my car. I was driving from, you know, from the Dipolo, going to the artist region. And then the mother was, you know, she happened to ask her daughter, four year old girl, love, love was there. Love? Ay talaga ka, pasalubong sa iyong mga friends.
friends. You know what the answer of that four-year-old girl? Mami, wala ko muli ko talaga yung mani. Itagahan ko muli yung mani, magpalit ko tako ang apul. O niya, o rings, o niya, yung spoon. And then, I will take that to Gabriel. There's also a lot, a boy, where we stay. There is Gabriel. And then I take that to Gabriel. And then I will take him to the room. And then I will take off my dress. And then Gabriel will choose to get up. I said, Love, love, where did you get that idea? And he asked the mother. And then the mother asked, What did you get that idea? It's not in television, you know, when I go and visit their home, uh, then they saw, I saw that kind of, you know, show. Went inside into the room and then I have to become naked. It flashed to my mind that the person of that family who played marbles to the public and now they allow the children watching shows that are not fitted for kids. I said, Len, kung ba tayo mong tumagula, patagal ba mo sa klaro siyo, do something for your children. But I believe that the son of this widow is a good son. The son of this widow is a kind son that if the mother was so busy dealing with the work inside the home. When someone will come to ask for something, the son will have to get out and give them what they need. That's why people, you know, are flatting and following in the royal position of the son. But now the son came to life again. All the people who believe that Jesus can restore the person. And all the people who receive benefits from this widow and the son they were so happy because the son came to life again. Now, Jesus tried to emphasize that he has the power. In fact, the Bible tells us that he has the case of hell and death. Yes, the widow believe that Jesus is the better one who is written Lazarus. You remember? And so in Luke 17, 16, And they all were filled with fear and praise God. A great prophet has appeared among us, and he said, God has come to save his people. Now people believe that the prophet has come and helped them. Now they believe that Jesus has come to give life. Now they believe that Jesus is not only God in human and healing sick people, healing the blind people, healing those who are in paralysis. But he can also give life to the dead. People were shouting. In fact, the Lord says, the mother, after hearing all the miracles, she had that experience of seeing personally. But now that his son is back, for that one, Jesus was the closest friend in her life. According to his wife, she said, He who gave back to the widow her only son, as he was given to the poor girl, touched today by the womb of the bereaved mother. He is woman's best friend today, and is ready to aid her in all the relationship, the relations of love. In other words, after healing and giving life to his son, her son, that woman believe that Jesus was her true friend. After seeing his son get up, she knew that death is not the end of life. That death is not the end of our dream. That death is not the last steps of our existence. Yes, the mother recalled the days when Jesus performed her and he remembered that Jesus resulted Lazarus. The feeling of that mother was the same feeling of Martha and Mary. Why? Because when Jesus was there healing 
the people. He knew that his friend was not that sick. And then there was the notice that he was asked to go and visit his friend so that he can heal his friend. But because of some work to do, Jesus was not able to go there at the exact time. In that when he reached the place where Lazarus, Mary and Martha lived, he knew that Lazarus was there. And so when he arrived at the house of Mary and Martha, Martha, you know, went and met Jesus. And she bowed down and cried, Lord, I know that if you were only here when my brother was sick on bed, I know that you can be here. I know, Lord, that you were very close to my brother. I know that you can touch him and then he will be cured. But Lord, now he is dead. We buried him already. You are dead. You are dead. But you know what? Jesus, because he was a man of compassion, because he was a melancholic man, in John 11, 25, says, and Jesus wept. Jesus wept. And so he said, okay, now where did you bury me, my friend? Listen. And so he brought the Jesus to the burial of Lazarus. And I believe that the feeling of that mother whose son was that, the same feeling with Mary and Martha, when Jesus was there feasting the dog, and then he called his friend Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. And there everybody saw that Lazarus stood up at the entrance of the graveyard, and then woke. Yes, she was happy. They were happy in the resurrection of Lazarus. Friends, Jesus has the power not only to touch us to be healed in our infirmities, but He has the power to touch us for life. He can touch us and give us eternal life. Yes, the people, you know, were being destroyed by this paradox. When people know that there are those people who are being treated by God, you know, the story tells us that a man went to Jesus, the name of Jairus, and then Jairus, you know, paid Jesus, please come, my daughter is dead, my daughter is sick, please come. But Jesus, you know, he was so busy in dealing with people because lots of people, you know, brought sick people for them to be treated. And he was about to go. And then the same situation, when he was about to go to the house of Jairus, it was exactly the time when the woman had an issue of blood, touched the hem of his clothes, and he said, Who touched me? And then the disciple said, Oh, lots of people are around you. And then he asked, Now, who touched you? I don't know, because lots of people are surrounding you. And he said, No, somebody touched me. And because of that, Instead of going to the house of Jairus, he was delayed. And then he confronted the woman, because he knew the story. And the woman was so afraid that he was recognized, she was recognized by Jesus, that she touched the hem of his clothes. And because she was one as a woman, nobody would help her, nobody would defend her. She was a woman. She got, you know, terribly afraid. But you know, when Jesus looked at her, Jesus, had compassion on her. I said, because of your faith, that gave you hope. And then after healing that woman, Jairus, then that the soldier, he says, please, Lord, go to our house. My daughter is sick, please. And so, Jairus, Jesus, went together to go to her. But before reaching the house, one of Jairus' servants came and said, Master, do not bother our master Jesus, because your daughter is dead. When Jairus heard the news that his daughter was dead, she, he cried, 
Yes, must pass within the garden's gate. Must kneel alone in darkness there and battle with some first mistake.